TPR. Before we begin this episode, I have some news. And that news is uh, for the first time in over six years, uh, more like two, three years of consistent leaders, but six years since we've started, I can say that support for this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Oh, ho, 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 Sergei, congratulations. We're big time. We're big time. Big time, big time. time. The reaching out to a lot of people is fair. But, but. Support for this episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. So Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools. They've given us something to read, and I'm reading it. Um, they've recently launched the Men's Ultimate Hygiene Bundle, the performance package, and 4 million people worldwide trust Manscaped. Now, let's be clear. They sent us some stuff. They sent us a trimmer. They sent us another trimmer. They sent us... Uh, there's a bag. We have, we have free stuff that Manscaped sent to us, and they also sent us, uh, yeah, 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 they sent us deodorizers and- All deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the one. <laughs> and then for the other one, there's a ball toner. <laughs> what they've also given us is a discount code, shockingly, where we can now pass on some of our dubious success to our viewers. Uh, if you use the code TPR for Manscaped, you get a 20% discount which is which is pretty wow. massive and look as russell peters famously okay. said the audience is mostly south asian men and south asian men are famously hairy men who famously live in warmer climates so you know this is important we know this is important and you have a discount code to use now the most important thing that i feel in all of this that people don't cover is this this is a nose and ear <laughs> hair trimmer which in my advancing age, I've been told I need to use more and more. Uh, the stuff that they sent us, by the way, is waterproof. The trimmer even has my favorite feature, which is a light. Uh, so <laughs> use that as it may. But yeah, get 20% off and free shipping with code TPR at manscaped.com. That oh, is there's, there's, there's boxers and a t-shirt as well. Boxers and a t-shirt as well. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code TPR. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for a job with Manscaped. If you live in North America, Europe, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and the UAE and Saudi Arabia, you can use all of this. Waterproof, good stuff, supporting our podcast. Therefore, you need to support them too. Thank you very much for Manscaped sponsoring this episode. And uh, you'll be hearing more about this. You'll be hearing the same thing over this month. And uh, now let's begin our episode on a podcast about Pakistan's economy. <laughs> Some uh, thing I was listening to, maybe somebody on Colbert, where they were like, you know, everyone says, people, some people say that Putin's like a not a rational character he's unhinged he was like no he's he's had like five or six wars in the past 20 years and he's yeah. won all of them so yeah that's a that whole thing actually is like such a and it's been a problem here in western u.s media as well in new york times and post is like article after article has said that he's unhinged and he's irrational and things like that it's lazy analysis yeah in you haven't bothered studying the guy b it's like if he's irrational and unhinged this is not russia is an authoritarian dictatorship yes but it's not a banana republic yeah, Uske yeah. Eird -eird are other powerful people especially heads of intelligence and military yeah so yeah. yeah, powerful to yeah he's not like stalin to nahi hai stalin bhi hota stalin bhi unhinged hota ussr ki history bhari hui hai with khrushchev and others who yeah. the politburo thought had lost it and they removed him you yeah. know it's not and they will probably remove him after this because it's not going to plan yeah, it's um, not going amazingly well or as as they might have hoped uh, yeah, so we'll see. and there's also oh, now that whole the oligarch thing where they have like a lot of influence because they have the money, yeah. the real money. Chelsea bikne wale <laughs> Bro, which MBS ko wo lo lo. 
मे बी दे विल उनका तो कुछ कह भी नहीं सकते एमबीएस को लो भाई आ रही है न्यूकासल छोड़ो चेल्सी उठा या या देयर सम गोल्फ टूर्नामेंट आल्सो देयर समबडी वांट टू स्टार्ट सऊदी अरेबिया में मैंने उड़ते उड़ते कहीं देखा था इट हैपेंड ओ ओके या या ट्रंप सन एंड लॉजेट कुशनर वाज देयर एज़ वेल and phil mickelson so, and a few other big guys were there say you know for to matlab uh, that's legitimate now um yeah, yeah. <laughs> but khair you are uzair yunus in case uh, i didn't make an intro uh, and you run the pakistan army podcast and you have a real job as well apart from this um you might have seen uzair last year in the podcast panel that we did his first appearance on the show and i told him that you know he's definitely i'm going to have him back nearly a year later <laughs> now we're sort of making that happen so thank you very much for making the time was there uh how well, are things for how having are you, me how are you doing yeah everything's good um things are fine here in in washington slowly reopening getting back to whatever quote unquote we can call normal life um, yeah in, yeah in where the world that we live in um but it's also not a great last few days right not great in the sense that um war is never good and then when you look at social media uh, pakistani social media debates it's mm. also you know disorienting and discouraging about what people end up talking about yeah um as well in the context of what's going on um but it's also in a way as telling somebody yesterday that it's heartening to see the ukrainians resist the way they have um i feel like you know just from my perspective that Putin's a bully and he's walked into another country uninvited and he's gotten a reception that perhaps many of us did not expect yeah. um and in in weird ways like my you know as a pop culture reference we may be seeing a modern day 300 type sparta play out in ukraine um where a comedian who was elected as yeah. president has, yes. has he's not run away right yeah. we yeah, know yeah, a guy yeah. who ran away across our border in pakistan yeah. <laughs> uh when push came to shove he's yeah. decided that he's going to stay um so everything besides that is good podcast is going well we're coming up on 100 episodes um i saw yeah it's grown organically really well mm. um but yeah couldn't 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 complain given the times that we did i thought the podcast would be a good place to start but before that you mentioned you're in washington acha uh, uh, for the audience we're recording this at what i think is like 8 am your time on a yeah 805 on a saturday february 26 yeah, let's why? put the time stamp in there <laughs> yeah why why do this to yourself like when you it's 1 pm where i am i was like all right man he's he's yeah. like yeah is this your usual are you like a disciplined person yeah i wake up early generally um and actually the podcast on pakistanami recordings most of them are done either 6 or 7 am Oh okay um, cuz I wake up it's evening in Pakistan yeah. I yeah. I make my coffee and you know I'm like let's do this mm. it gets me going in the day mm. um gets gets a good conversation flowing yeah. um and so yeah I wake up early no 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 my my wife is across in the other room there and she's fine she's with the 6am yeah. discussions on finance she she <laughs> she's up in the morning as well I think she's okay. actually working herself right now okay <laughs> okay okay acha to how if washington is where you are how do you get you're from pakistan how do you go from pakistan to washington and start podcast what's that journey yeah so i mean look i grew up in pakistan uh karachi went to st paul's o levels wahan se kiya 40 london ke sath um kafi saron se abhi tak dosti hai hamare ek yeah, yeah. milte hain baat chat gap shap karte hain um o levels way to a levels ke liye i went to grammar um as a quote and quote new g which right, was way right. like a big deal sta yeah yeah there's a whole distinction in uh, grammar schools between ogs and new gs and there's like a weird class orientation yeah, yeah, yeah. which takes you 6 months aap ko 6 mahine lagte hain andar ghusne mein uh in terms of getting people to accept you for who you are um which is a whole story in and of itself yeah um the way experience tha 2 saal grammar mein guzare um or per uh, i always wanted to and my parents encouraged me to go abroad to study uh, my siblings had not they had studied in karachi only uh, for their higher education so maine kaha theek hai sat lete hain uh, apply karte hain common apps apply kiya um i got into 
three universities, Butler University, which is outside Indiana, Rice University in Houston, or uh, Bentley. And Houston, I don't like the city. Lots of places. Lots of places. If I go to the city, I don't like the city. So, if you have a lot of people who are in Houston, you can't get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I was like, I used to love, and this is like you know, an example of American soft power. I used to love this show, Boston Legal. I don't know if right. you've seen it or not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I was like, 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 um and then the financial crisis hit and as i was studying in banking and things like that i was like this is not the place i want to be in because it was just like it was morally like a weird thing you know mm. thode 20 21 saal ke baad 19 saal ke to thode morals ko zyada hi high temperature pe hote hain so it was like a repugnant nahi jana isme aur aise jobs bhi nahi thi to bada aasan right. justify yeah. karna from all stands right yeah. no kuch aise hi nahi mil rahi to chalo theek hai morality pe kya nahi karna <laughs> um so uh, i ended up at deloitte i did mm. consulting there in the technology sector what's now called deloitte digital um do saal wo kiya and then deloitte has a program it says either you go to your mba or pay for it and come back and work or you know it's up to you what do you want to do um so my mentor sat me down uh, pakistani tha uh, he's a good friend um usne kaha ke yaar tum matlab hum jab kaam ke baad baat karte hain तो कुछ लोग टेक्नोलॉजी की बात कर रहे होते हैं कुछ लोग कुछ और स्पोर्ट्स की बात कर रहे हैं तुम एक्साइट होते हो जब यू नो पॉलिसी या जियो पॉलिटिक्स या सियासत पे बात होती है तो तुम एम नहीं करो क्या करोगे एम बी करके लाइक करिकुलम चेक करो तुम ऐसे ही बैंकली से आयो यू नो इट माइट बी वेरी सिमिलर टू वॉट यू ऑलरेडी स्टडी तो आई लुक एट इट ही वॉज ऑन पॉइंट आई थॉट अबाउट इट एंड आई थॉट बैक टू माई बेंटली डेज वेयर my english professor had once sat me down i had written a english paper and probably was the only one in my class who wrote an english paper on the growing influence of china in africa this was 2008 when right, i wrote this right right so she had sat me down and said ke yaar to matlab business school mein ho lekin tumhara passion to kuch alag jagah pe lagta hai to agar aage padhne ka socho to look at the fletcher school so it was okay. in my mind and when bilal at deloitte said the same Uh, I was like, okay, let's look at Fletcher. The curriculum looked exciting. The program was very interesting to me. So then I ended up at the Fletcher School back in Boston. Um, did my masters in public policy, what is called international law and diplomacy there. But basically, my focus was um, security studies. So I my master's thesis was on Pakistan's counterinsurgency doctrine um, and then economic policy. And I looked at broader emerging market economics as part of my studies. So all um, during this time. Uh, this mm-hmm. your plan was to stay in the us going back to pakistan was not considered there was a moment around 2014 13 14 when i wanted to um i was uh, an insafian at that time very right. hardcore one my brother right. reminds Past me tense. of that yeah uh, my brother reminds me of that ki tumhe ek zamane mein jin chada tha do cheezon ka ek imran khan ka aur ek pakistan wapas jana hai um but as i finished uh, the masters program sort of you know it was one of those things ke uh, i wanted to work in the sort of uh, national security side of things okay so wo maine research khatam ki professor ke sath baitha apne professor shorts at fletcher um great mentor so he sat me down and gave me a reality check he's like tumne research to badi achhi kiya hai theek hai so tumhari recommendations bhi achhi hai counter insurgency ke upar kyun pehle haar rahe the phir jeete kaise aage kya karna chahiye लेकिन वो कहता है कि देखो पाकिस्तान को तुम भी जानते हो मैं भी जानता हूँ तुम्हारी खानदान में कोई फौज में है या तुम कोई यू नो पंजाबी हो क्या हो नहीं, yeah. नहीं ऐसा कोई सीन नहीं है yeah. तो कहता है फिर तुम एक काम करो इसमें तो तुम्हारी कोई सुनने वाला नहीं है ऑनेस्ट <laughs> yeah. तो तुम एक काम करो तुम जो है ना इकोनॉमी पे फोकस करो रीजन की बिकॉज दैट्स वेर द एक्शन विल बी he was projecting 10 years ahead right this was like so you think about it this is him saying geo economics will be the focus before geo economics was a term um so i was like okay and then he was like go work in washington find your way around in terms of sort of doing the research that you want to do and that's how i ended up there um but kyunki mera consulting background tha um so i ended up at albright stonebridge group which is madden albright consulting firm uh working on south asia and technology policy but basically 
it was policy related to consulting with clients and helping international clients do business in South Asia and around right. the world. Right. So that's how I ended up there. And most of my focus was looking at the South Asian market, which is 90% India focused. Um, I continued to do Pakistan work because that was my you know, core interest from an intellectual perspective. And that's how the podcast came about. Um, hmm. So I don't know if it's a long winded answer to your question, but that's how I ended up in DC. And by 2019, 20, um, I was like, hey, I, I'm, I'm always interested in talking to people to learn more about Pakistan. And why not just do a podcast because I'm having those conversations in any case. Where were you having those conversations? Like just in person, online? Just in person or on the phone when you would engage with people for a client, right? client And this is a true story and it's been years so I can talk about it. So I won't name the client. But a client came to us and said that we have to go to Pakistan. And this is the thing that we have to go to Pakistan in 2018. Or Hamari up assessment day, I will buy a you know, my shirt kiss of Jarge or default hoga in the yoga, MFC Pesyang in the Yang, power sector key situation, guy reforms outlook, right? They wanted to do a risk analysis. So when you do that, like I'm sitting in Washington, my Pakistan Jata for work. But so either you meet people in person when you're in Pakistan or you pick up the phone and you call a few people and ask them, KR Matla, I've read this policy, I'm sort of seeing what the government is saying. Help me understand what they're actually doing. And then that would go into the analysis, right? So that was basically a podcast conversation focused on a client. And I was like, I'm already doing that. Um, why not talk to these smart people to let more people understand that, mm. you know, there is a difference between the rhetoric that we hear in the public domain and the actual reality and maybe shine a light on the reality. of it. Yeah. There was something you mentioned in the panel last year, which I found to be like a good, um, like tagline or a good branding identity where you said that you wanted to take people on a journey of learning is the way you said it. So now obviously a podcast, there's this ties into the angle where you're having the conversation and, you know, your analysis and uh, conclusions are evolving as a result of those. What were you seeing on the side of the public where you said, where, this understanding, this sort of exposure is clearly missing here. So they will need what the podcast will produce, right? Because if everybody knows, there was a gap that you identified in understanding, knowledge, approach to arguments, whatever it may be. What was that and where did you see it most? Was it just, you know, uh, Twitter ignorance? It was Twitter ignorance. It was ignorance in conversations I would have. Like, as I said, made up audience a group, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're well educated people. Assessment complaint why is are things not working the way they should be? Um diagnosis so I would find that their knowledge and understanding of the um, situation was very thin, if not mm-hmm. misinformed. Mm. Right, which was concerning to me because I am in America and I'm like, yeah, you look to Pakistan, you know, you live and breathe and, and yeah, you know, sort of engage with this situation every day. How come is it that you don't understand? You're not, you're like, you know, the cream of the crop from what I see. Because we have all levels here in Pakistan, say Saint Paul, say, I mean, that's one of the best educations you could get as a citizen of Karachi, right? Uh, as a middle class sort of, because Paul's is was is still not that expensive of a school, right? But it provides very high quality education. So that was sort of one way. The other was obviously with family and friends and others that you would talk to within and outside Pakistan. Um, then emerging data started coming out. So for example, American Pakistan Foundation research um, on how uh, the diaspora, Pakistani diaspora, jo hai, uh, information Pakistan ke mein kaise consume karta hai. Um, so the number okay. one uh, sort of uh, mode of ingestion of communication or news for the diaspora, according to this survey, and it was a pretty robust survey. It wasn't 30,000 people, but it was enough of a good sample size, was WhatsApp, yeah. <laughs> which is like, psh, yeah, like, you know, yeah. like, if you consume news from WhatsApp, or you consume news from Pakistan, or you consume news from Pakistan, or you consume news from Pakistan, it's a big problem, right? Um, <laughs> and so that was the thing. And then you saw, like, I gave you the gas example, right? The gas example is a good one in the sense at that time, 
uh, that when I would talk to experts about what was wrong, what needed to be done, et cetera, um, you would get very good information. And then you turned on the TV um, at that same time. And the conversation was on TV, that they had a lot of money. और करप्शन की है कि आप तो अगर पता चलेगा तो yeah. आप तो रोंगते खड़े हो yeah, yeah, no specifics. हाँ, the no specifics and I was like that's basically not true because I would ask like the reason I, I stumbled into this was like I would ask the experts then right privately yeah this is the headline my client is worried about this and they want to be sure that if they invest in Pakistan they don't end up on the wrong side of FCRA which is the Foreign Corrupt Regulations Act or FCPA, you know, UK and US and Japan, others have very strong anti-corruption laws, right? They have yeah, to abide yeah. by that. So that's why they were concerned about the headlines. And when I was sitting in the private, people said, okay, there's no problem, there's the issues are X, Y, Z, they're more market-oriented issues and corruption-oriented issues. Um, so that's not a risk in the Pakistani context, mm. right? And I was like, then why? I mean, in mainstream conversation, why don't you tell people about this thing? Yeah. Right. And that was basically the the thing was that okay, if I'm doing that already and I myself am learning these things, why not take everybody else did you, who may be interested? Did you? I was wondering when you were saying the WhatsApp Ali Batman because when I went to Pakistan uh, over the winter, Abhi, uh, I saw it for the first time. Like, because WhatsApp disinformation, because it's that joke or meme or whatever it was when we were kids and the internet was new. Our parents told us not to believe anything we read on the internet. And now our parents believe everything on the internet. Like it's to the point where I saw people, uh, there was a, a YouTube collab on the phone. Pe, and uh, somebody was like, Aap dekhe, you report IVA, American general is saying that Pakistan ke missiles are advanced that America tak, America tak pahunch sakte. And report jo thi, that was basically text written in the thumbnail of a YouTube video. Like the video wasn't even playing and it was just, that was written and that was, and it's like, yeah, okay, mm. that must be true. Yeah. Like I was shocked at how there was no concept of interrogating the data, kahan se aai, validity, kuch hai nahi. So that's one thing. So one question from that would be, you know, maybe your, our friends, your friends are more tech savvy. They're perhaps more critical of this. Was, did you feel that their level of that, were they ekto part of this WhatsApp information gaining uh, pool that the research looked at? And do you think this extends upwards? Because like maybe your friends aren't policymakers. Do the policymakers also look at these sort of sources which are not really connected to reality? Uh, and dusra sawal ye tha ke, did you ever get an answer for why the real reasons are not being discussed in mainstream news if the real reasons are known yeah so i mean look i'll, I'll take the second one first um why are they not being discussed is because um of various reasons the hmm. key among them at least and this is my opinion as well research on this per se um is a mismatch of incentives right um between the corporate media number one but also between the interests of the quote unquote political and non-political elite and the citizens on the other side. On the corporate media side, what are you gunning for? You're gunning for eyeballs, right? Ratings. You're gunning for ratings. I'm gunning for ratings as Pakistan too, let's be sure, honest. Right? Sure. But I have like 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. I go to my friend sent me another news channel, which does some of the stuff that you were just alluding to. Unke do million followers. Hai. Now, if I get into the incentive mismatch of I need to make money from Pakistan, which I don't right now, so I'm okay with it, but let's assume I do. It's very easy for me to turn up the channel or yeah. the turn up the volume on the kind of garbage that you were talking about to make that money, right? I would get 2 million subscribers, monetization, ho jayegi, bade achhe paise, you know, yeah. ho jayenge, it's from YouTube monetization. So that's the mismatch. It's on YouTube and it's on corporate media because you need iPhones. On the citizen versus elite side, the incentive is mismatched because the entire status quo is a beneficiary of the status quo. Yeah. So yeah. it is in its very interest to continue to, you know, in Urdu, like, mm. 
ताकि जो सिस्टम है वो कंटिन्यू करे आप कभी समझे कि करप्शन मसला है आप कभी yeah. समझें कि तारीती निजाम मसला होता तो मसला नहीं होता आप कभी समझें कि ये इसराइल की साजिश है yeah. मिसाइल हमने बना दिए तो अब वो हमें गिराने की सोच रहे हैं क्योंकि हमारे मिसाइल तो वहां तक पहुंचते हैं yeah, yeah. <laughs> तो वो आपको ट्रक की बत्ती के पीछे लगा देते हैं ताकि आप कुछ ना कुछ नया चूरन खाने लग जाए और जो स्टार्टस को है वो कंटिन्यू करें सो आई थिंक दैट्स द आंसर टू द सेकंड क्वेश्चन ऑन द फर्स्ट वन आई हैव सीन लाइक ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ पीपल फॉल फॉर व्हाट्सएप एंड इन मेनी वेज जो यू नो टू योर पॉइंट दैट यू सेड लाइक हम आवर पेरेंट्स व्हेन वी वर ग्रोइंग अप वुड से के तुम खराब हो जाओगे कंप्यूटर से और चैट कर रहे और ये वो इन इन इफेक्ट दे हैव बिकम द विक्टिम्स ऑफ द वेरी कंसर्न um right especially but it's across generation mm. i think this it is it is tiktok pe bhi bhari hui hai yeah. um all sorts of weird cuckoo stuff um so i think it's a common thing um in our culture i would say we're more prone to some of this stuff because we're uh, in in many ways we're not a written society we're more of a vocal society to so, jab hum bachpan se bade hote hain i still think about the fact that you know no one taught me or anybody when we went to the masjid for madrasa or for namaz or for the juma khutba to ask the imam ke jo aap keh rahe hain jiski tashreeh aap kar rahe hain ya aapne padhi kahan se uski source yeah. kya hai yeah. ya aap jo cheez quote kar rahe hain wo kehte hain idhar se aayi hai ya sahi yeah. bukhari se aayi hai kahin se aayi hai but we don't question them on their interpretation right wo to ek to verse hai na uski interpretation kaise ki kahan se aapne uski chain of analysis kiya hai bhai kisi ne to kiya hoga hazar saal pehle ek analysis fir aapne usko build kiya hoga right to wo hum poochte nahi hai hmm and there's, that pervades in this thing i've also seen the sort of like anti intellectualism where the concept of poochna is negative or somehow not respectful we're not taught to ask you yeah ये क्यों होता है राइट बच्चे यू नो इफ यू मिस नोटिस नॉर्मल चाइल्ड अक्रॉस कल्चर दे विल ऑलवेज आस्क व्हाट व्हाई हाउ बट जब हम मुझे आई रिमेंबर व्हेन वी वुड आस्क व्हाई आर थिंग्स द वे दे आर चुप करो तुम्हें कुछ नहीं पता राइट एंड 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 दैट परवेड्स अक्रॉस सोसाइटी राइट एंड ये वो उसमें क्लासिज्म भी आ जाता है तो वो एलीट्स कहते हैं कि चुप कर यार तू यार ये क्या मुझे क्या पता है मंडी बाउद्ध दीन का चुप या 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 मुझे पता है राइट so i think that's the that's the basic thing but overall i think increasingly because people are connected to the world um they're consuming more information they see what's going on globally and then they see what's going wrong within their own lives i think that's the upside of whatsapp and tiktok and youtube and other so people are hungry for that kind of information um not at the same level as they should be but i think it's made people realize that hey something else is going on here that we need to be paying attention to yeah yeah it would be like a you know gross misstatement to say that these things are only negative and they've only had uh, adverse consequences especially because just wo wali baat ke you know if you think how would pakistan mein logon ki mentality change wagera before the internet you just didn't have exposure to alternative anything so right it was just pakistan mein aise hota hai and that's all you see Your whole life, TV पे भी आपको वही दिखाएंगे बाहर आपने मुल्क से जाना नहीं है इट्स एक्सपेंसिव बाहर से लोग तो आते नहीं है बिकॉज हालात खराब है वट एवर बट नाउ विद इंटरनेट एंड एवरी बडीज पॉकेट स्पेशली थिंग्स लाइक टिकटॉक विच आर सो परवेसिव एंड यू नो इट्स जस्ट लाइक फन आइडियाज बट वो वाली बात है ना कि अच्छा जी टिकटॉक पे एवरी वन डांसिंग इन पब्लिक एंड दैट लाइक अ वेरी बेसिक आइडिया पाकिस्तान में तो ऐसा हो ही नहीं सकता Perhaps कोई सोचेगा कि क्यों नहीं हो सकता वाई आर थिंग्स द वे दे आर लाइक इट्स अ लीप बट वो वाली बात है ना कि वन यू एक्सपैंड द प्रोबिलिटी ओवर लाइक टें मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल तो वो छोटे छोटे स्टेटिस्टिकल नॉमिलीज जो है वो दे कैट रियलाइज हाउज द पॉडकास्ट एक्सपीरियंस बिन दैन नाउ यूर आर टेन आई थिंक यू आर लाइक फोर थाउजेंड लास्ट ईयर वी स्पोक तो हाउ हाउ हैज योर initial idea when you started ki main logon se baat karunga and ye hum achhi baatein karenge and log samjhenge and they will gain knowledge from this how has that stood up to what could be like entrenched biases against ek to what you're saying ke you know yaar tumhare guest nahi pasand ya they just don't like your line of questioning maybe they don't trust you ke bhai tum to america mein rehte ho agent ho has that happened i'm sure it's happened <laughs> it's a little bit but i think broadly broadly speaking it's been good it's been more um people have been more receptive and and open to the conversations than i thought because i remember jab 
میری مشرف زیدی سے اس بارے میں بات کی آج ہے کہ یار پانچ سو بندہ بھی نہیں سنے گا رائٹ ہزار آ جائے تو بڑی بات ہے رائٹ پاکستان I've noticed it's interesting related to conversations focused on Pakistan and the number of Indians interested in that. So 30% of my audience are Indians, mm. um, which is like, you know, as I was like, I mean, they're also shocked about Pakistan. And their mainstream media is not providing that, right? Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. also interested yeah. in learning more about across the border. So um, overall, it's been good. And people, sort of some people I've sort of seen over time, like talking about that journey, right? And the, the way they comment and, you know, um, that they seem to have also begun to understand, um, you know, what we're trying to get at. And again, the idea itself is that it's not confrontational. It's not Shor Sharaba. It's like, you know, I had a guest who was, whose book recommendation was Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And I vehemently disagree yeah. <laughs> with anybody who thinks that book is worth the paper it's printed on. Right. But hey, that was her worldview. She was putting it out there. And what interestingly happened was that if you sort of look at the comments in that video, the audience itself was like, hey, this doesn't add up because we've listened to other things that, you know, others have said. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's also a good test to say, okay, when somebody with a very different set of contrarian views that may not be that cohesive um, comes on, the audience sort of is able to sort of filter that out. Mm. Mm. And then with confrontational value parts, so when you do encounter, I think I asked you this previously also, but when you do come across this, because, you know, in your field of like geoeconomics, there are clear binaries that can be chosen and there can be people who you disagree with fundamentally. Have you had such people on, like you had one example at least, and in that scenario, would you like disagree with them? Would you just ask them to keep elaborating until perhaps they reach the point where you know you win quote unquote i don't think that's the purpose but you know yeah no i don't press them in that sense right look like i mean i'll give you an example niftai smile was on a couple of episodes ago he talked about um the power sector and i was like what would what would you do differently given where we are and his argument was and i'm summarizing this was that we'll just sell more power by making it cheaper and that'll help us sort of do that right and and i pressed him a little bit on that saying you know, help me understand like what would be and then he talked about privatization of discos other things um people who follow the energy sector a lot more than i do um said his facts were wrong and i should have pressed him etc that's not my format right, right. so right. i let him put it out I, i when when where it didn't make sense to me i said can you elaborate to give me a better clearer picture and then it's up to the guest about how wonky they want to get with it right and how much detail they want to provide hmm. but my goal is to get them to talk about their vision in broad strokes in, right. in, in, from a, if he's a politician right if he's an academic it's a very different type of a conversation in any case but he's putting out the numbers he believes in and the methodology he thinks is going to be there for reforms um he's open to providing as much detail and i'm open to listening again if he wants to go into 15 minute monologue to explain that more power to them i'll listen right um but then it's up to the audience to judge whether this adds up to scrutiny or not it may not right. add up to my personal scrutiny but i won't i don't usually say that um unless it's something egregious i will just press in the sense that okay help me understand x y yeah, yeah, yeah. and and we go on and we move on from that point hmm. i only ask because you know with over the years with the uh, you know the joe rogan situation being where people come on the show and they say egregious things and which Joe Rogan himself might not agree with. And obviously he says that it's not, you know, his job to do this. Um, but the implication being that I think in your case, it might be clearer where the audience hopefully understands that this is not something you are endorsing and their own, 
intellectual interrogation of the facts is required if and recommended ke bhai aapne ye sun liya ab aap khud isko bhi judge kare ye nahi ki aapne pee liya i think with joe rogan that doesn't come across because people trust joe rogan and just yeah. bringing somebody on his show is considered buzz ye endorsement hai ab jo bhi yeah. hai wo counter culture wala obviously which is a really I, i followed the whole drama loosely with joe rogan i think yeah. that's such a stupid way of critiquing somebody because like just because i'm talking to somebody does not mean i believe or agree with yeah. what they're saying and huh. i think this is the weird part of the world we live in now is that ke matlab you know i have friends who in india who believe in the bjp sure that does not make me a bhakt it does not also make them a bigot by definition ha huh. huh. right and we're living in this world of binaries where it's yeah, like yeah. also to baat karna bhi matlab jo hai na and i'm like thank you nahi yeah i think with jorogan there's also the like inertia of his like enormous audience where you know there will 100% be vastly more idiots who will just believe ke bas ye jo bhai ne bula liya ye banda sahi yeah. obviously jo bhai bhi you know what does he know like he knows about fitness he knows about comedy those are his fortes mma wagaira अब कोई बंदा आके कोई डीप पॉलिटिकल साइंस बोल के चला जाए जो रोगन को क्या पता बट यू नो देर इजोलीफिक सेट ऑफ पैरामीटर थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू साउथ एशिया फाइनेंस दैट सोर्ट ऑफ हैव यू ट्राइड गोइंग आउटसाइड दोज बॉर्डर मे बी मोर प्रोवेसिव इशूज डू यू कंसिडर योर work to be within boundaries yeah it has to be within boundaries and i touch on like geopolitics and regional developments um etc um every once in a while because it links back to what's yeah. going on in pakistan but beyond that like i'm not going to get into like let's see hi i mean i've had professors professor kuru came on and talked about like his book which is about um how and why authoritarianism became the norm in muslim majority countries okay. right okay. it's like deep intellectual work around the history and i had him because that's a topic that relates to pakistan and its sure. political economy um so as long as i can draw that connect as loose as that as that might be yeah. i think that works but beyond that <clears throat> not really like i'll have like i've had abdul majid jafri come and talk about um legal issues in pakistan right related to cases being stuck and nasla tower versus barrier town versus stuff um that's more on the social end of yeah. the political economy but it links to the politics of the political sure. economy as sure. well and you can't sure. disconnect those so that's how i see it hmm acha hum chal baat kar li about all these discussions you've had have your has has what you've learned on the podcast been in many in any way completely different to what you expected from pakistan ke masle masail or has what you've heard largely been in line with what you suspected basically i'm going to ask you to try and summarize pakistan ke masle kya um mm-hmm. in your view but throughout these like 100 episodes nearly um has your have your suspicions been confirmed mostly or has there also been like stuff or like oh shit acha if this is true then i was not on the right path Yeah I mean it's a bit of both mostly it's been sort of on point in terms of what I figured the issues were um but some have been shocking not as a oh I was wrong about this but oh how I underestimated the problem itself like I'll give you an example yeah. um Adil Mansoor I'm trying to get him on the show again in the next couple of weeks he writes for business recorder um does fantastic research on agriculture theek hai I've had him a couple of times talk about agriculture markets particularly wheat कि मतलब वाई इज इट दैट मतलब बचपन से लेके आज तक जो है दो साल गंदम बहुत ज्यादा होती है तीसरे साल शॉर्टेज हो जाती है फिर हम इंपोर्ट करते हैं फिर कुछ मसला हो जाता है राइट कि ये क्यों मतलब है क्या चक्कर राइट सो ही कन्फर्म मोस्ट ऑफ वट आई न्यू टू बी ट्रू बेन ही शेयर अदर डेटा वेर फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर इज यू नो यू हर्ड ऑफ सर्क्यूलर डेट इन पाकिस्तान राइट बिजली के अंदर और गैस के अंदर देर इज सर्क्यूलर डेट इन द कमोडिटी सेक्टर इन पाकिस्तान वो तकरीबन एक ट्रिलियन रुपए तक पहुंच चुका है ठीक है ये दिस इज बेसिकली जो हकूमत पाकिस्तान हकूमत नहीं हकूमत पाकिस्तान नहीं हुकूमत पाकिस्तान के अंदर इंक्लूडिंग पंजाब एंड सिंध इन पर्टिकुलर मिनिमम सपोर्ट प्राइस सेट करती हैं गंदम की उसको प्रोक्योर करती हैं और फिर उसको आगे मार्केट में बेचती हैं फ्लावर्स फ्लावर बनाने के लिए 
उसके अंदर देर इज ऑलवेज अ गैप बिटवीन वट द गवर्नमेंट बाइज द वीट फॉर एंड द प्राइस इट रिलीज इज इट टू एंड दर इज नेगेटिव लॉस राइट तो उसकी वजह से कमोडिटी डेड बनता है Usually, so the, when it sells at a loss, the debt piles up and it's close to a trillion rupees at this point. Um, and the situation is so grim that governments are now, um, if I remember what Adil said correctly, governments are now borrowing money to pay interest on the loans that they owe to the banks. Why does the government sell at a loss? Just that's because we thing. believe as a country that we need to have cheaper atta. Acha. And so the government intervenes in the market. plays a huge role in the wheat market and so the issue in the wheat sector is not that there is some mafia or some sort of like wo ho sakta hai kuch corruption ho rent seeking ho kuch ho sakta hai but the core reason why all of this happens is that the government has a major footprint in the market itself and it's an inefficient player and it enters the market and it distorts it and through those distortions everything goes around mm. right mm. and to me that was like oh crap like you know the situation is much more grim than what i envisioned it to be but yeah. on the flip side the solution is also much more easier mm. which is that market ko apna kaam karne do like I'll, and he gave me this example and others have written about this too if you look at sugarcane wheat and um sugarcane wheat and rice in pakistan sugarcane ka crisis har dafa hota hai mm. gandum ka crisis har dafa hota hai chawal ka crisis aapne kabhi hota hai suna nahi hoga mm. What's the diff? And chawal, we export. Karte hai, by the way. Yes. Yes. And, right? Basmati, we are putting. Chal raha hai. Basmati, we are ex- double one, double two export. Karte yeah. 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 but you will rarely talk and hear anyone talk about market oriented reforms in the agricultural sector especially in wheat and sugar cane because the entire incentive mechanism is structured in a way that it's leading to rents which the taxpayer is paying for through subsidies wo subsidy ki mad mein debt bhi badh raha hai theek hai to taxpayer uske bhi contribute kar raha hai over time to pay back that debt with interest और उसके मध में उसको सस्ता आटा भी नहीं मिल रहा लेकिन ये काम चले जा रहा है वो गंदम स्मगल भी हो जाता है प्राइस भी बढ़ जाती है मिलता भी नहीं है हम सब्सिडी भी दे रहे हैं टैक्स पे पे भी खर्चा कर रहा है लेकिन चल रहा है काम वट आई वुड सस्पेक्ट और आस्क अबाउट एक्सपर्ट नोज दिसल नो दिस वेल गवर्नमेंट को भी पता होगा ये बात तो वाई आर दे स्टिल एवरी थिंग इन माई माइंड इन पाकिस्तान आई थिंक कहीं ना कहीं समबडी इज मेकिंग मनी समबडी इन पावर एंड देर फॉर दे वो वाली बात इन दस्ट ऑफ दू टू मेनटेन दिस लॉस इज नॉट अफेक्टिंग दम बट द प्रोसेस इज नेटिंग दम समर्ट ऑफ किक बैक स्कीमिंग वट एवर विच इज माई प्रोफेशनल जॉब रिलेटेड बायस के वो करते रहेंगे वो इज दैट somewhere close to the reality here absolutely that's oh, the sorry. issue oh, no. i was yeah. hoping you'd say no <laughs> no that's the issue and look our our process over time the the system itself of political power is very exclusionary yeah and and may i ask example again because my work looks at india a lot um set aside what's going on in india with hindutva and everything yeah. Else, but yeah. look at their structure yeah india ki lok sabha mein aapko kisan ka representative bhi milega आपको दलित भी मिलेगा आपको मुसलमान भी मिलेगा आपको ब्राह्मण भी मिलेगा और बाकी क्रिश्चियन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स भी मिलेंगे फिर आप स्टेट लेवल पे चले जाएं यूपी से आंध्र प्रदेश तक यही आपको एक 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 डाइवर्सिटी नजर आएगी उनके पार्लियामान में जहाँ गरीब का भी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव है और अमीर का भी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव है ठीक है तो यू सी डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव राइट विच मीन्स दैट वैन पॉलिसी इज फ्रेम वैन डिबेट्स आर है सरकार ने क्या करना है किसको बेनिफिट्स देने हैं एवरीबडी गेट्स अ वॉइस एंड अ शेयर ऑफ द पाई एसेंशियली सो दे कैन कंपीट फॉर इट इन पार्लियामेंट नाउ इफ यू लुक एट एक तो हमारा निजाम वैसे ही कभी जमहूरियत होती है कभी हाइब्रिड होता है कभी मार्शल लॉ होता है तो एक तो ये फ्लॉ है स्ट्रक्चरली हिस्टोरिकल बर्डन दूसरा कि जब जमहूरियत होती भी है 
तो इफ यू लुक एट इस्लामाबाद में कौन बैठा है या लाहौर और सिंध की असेंबली में या कोयटा की असेंबली में पशावर की असेंबली में कौन बैठा है इट्स वेरी ईजी टू सी के दीज आर नॉट द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द एवरेज जोज ऑफ पाकिस्तान This was basically yeah, back in the day MQM ki tagline thi na, ke, haan. Ko tak denge. Haan, to, yeah. wo to middle class ka representative ya, kisan ka representative ya, trade union ka representative आपको पाकिस्तान की पार्लियामान में नजर नहीं आएगा उसकी वजह से होता ही है कि जब आप पॉलिसी बनाते हैं तो एक्सेस टू पावर कॉरिडोर है ही नहीं yeah. हम लोगों का yeah. तो वो जब नहीं होगा एक्सेस तो किसका एक्सेस होगा अमीरों के रिप्रेजेंटेटिव का होगा इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट का आ जाएगा बैंकर्स का आ जाएगा फर्टिलाइजर कंपनी का आ जाएगा किसी और के शुगर शुगर मिल ओनर का आ जाएगा तो दैट्स एसेंशियली द प्रॉब्लम के द एंड देन द इंटायर डिबेट देन गेट्स शिफ्टेड अराउंड सेइंग कि हम सब्सिडी दे रहे हैं ताकि आवाम को सस्ता आटा मिले वही मैंने जो पहले का ट्रक की बत्ती के पीछे आपको लगा दिया किसी और चीज के एसेंशियल जो इशू है वो उस पर बात नहीं हुई एन एट कंटिन्यूज एन एट कंटिन्यूज एंड वी डोंट रिफॉर्म and we don't reform in a way that generates inclusive governance inclusive growth uh inclusive development and we continue to segregate ourselves into the haves and the haves not yeah um and and i think that's a big big issue in the sense that you know i mean i mai har saal jab bhi fpr ki directory aati hai hasta hu ke parliament mein aisa kaise ho sakta hai ke wazir azam se leke aise across parties wazir azam se leke law minister tak रेगुलर पार्लियामेंटेरियन तक लोग खुशी खुशी ऑन एवरेज कुछ लोग हैं जो ज्यादा टैक्स देते हैं बट ऑन एवरेज दे पे लेस इन टैक्सेस देन अ बिजनेसमैन इन सदर इन कराची अनारकली का जो ताजर है वो ज्यादा टैक्स देता है इट्स सच अच अ ब्लेटेंट झूठ कि यू आर लाइक यू आर नॉट इवन प्रिटेंडिंग कि यू नो थोड़ा सा कर लें इट्स लाइक क्या करोगे यू कांट डू एनीथिंग दे नो दिस एंड यू नो दिस सो व्हाई इवन बदर प्रिटेंडिंग yeah and so that's the core that's why it doesn't shift because everybody the entire system is is oriented towards extraction of rents is very we may be a post colonial society but the system itself is very colonial in yeah. Its, yeah. In yeah, yeah 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 top down and yeah. and it's 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 very colonial in the sense not even ke jo extract ho rahi hai wealth ho wapas aapke mulk mein lag rahi hai it's actually flowing out yes so oh, so khan's diagnosis of the flow out is on point हो रहा है नॉट जस्ट द वेरी अमीर मिडिल क्लास वाला भी यू नो बिकॉज इट्स ओरिएंटेड दैट वे सोसाइटी की मेंटालिटी यही हो गई है कि आपने पैसे बनाने हैं पाकिस्तान में फिर आपने अपने मामू के थ्रू या चचा के थ्रू या कजन के थ्रू या बेटे बेटी के थ्रू दुबई किसी तरह पैसे पहुंचाने हैं या लंडन पहुंचाने रीजन वाई देर आर पापा जॉन्स ओन बाईल If you go through Pakistani Twitter की मीम हिस्ट्री ना आपको काफी पोलिटिकल नॉलेज भी मिल जाएगी ये बदलेगा तो नहीं ना फिर बदलेगा पाकिस्तानी लीड नीड टू बी आस्किंग आर दे गोइंग टू लेट अदर्स है बिगर शेयर ऑफ द पाए नो आई मीन दैट दिंग are they willing to do that or are they going to risk massive political social upheaval and i'll i'll give you why that's the case right if you look at the population pyramid of pakistan in terms of demographics we're a young society median age under 25 as well yeah as within that say, as people say pakistan mein potential bahut hai potential bahut hai but yeah. it's a ticking time bomb right yeah uh, put yourselves in the shoes of a 20 20 year old in 2022 you're on tiktok you're on youtube you're looking at what where the world is going you're looking at where your peers are going and you're feeling left behind you have, but you have aspirations and ambitions within that cohort you're also likely to have the same number of children maybe a one half a child less on average than your parents did meaning that you're going to birth another three of you in the next 10 years now fast forward from 22 to uh, 2035 13 saal aage chale jao 35 saal ke ho gaye ho that person man woman either way your aspirations have not been met there are millions of you and you've birthed millions others and you yeah. can't meet their potential yeah. on top of it there's climate change there is no clean air yeah hamari generation ko to at least clean air mil gayi thi wo bhi nahi hai sahi hai kuch resources nahi hai it's massive and the rich have sort of extracted more at that point you will reach a critical mass hmm. that will either end up on the streets as a um 
socialist type movement which has happened in the world unlikely in pakistan because we don't teach our people socialism and inclusion yeah, in that sense yeah yeah so the more likely route is the tlp type route ke wo growth ho wahan se jo hai ek middle finger dikhai jaye status quo ko jo dikhai ja rahi hai in punjab at this point yeah or it bursts onto the scenes as a lava and see when i mention this to people <clears throat> people say well we are security state will clamp down on it the problem became happening now in pakistan is that the radical ideology is being in in the sense and i view tlb as a radical ideology that type of ideology is found has found a home in the villages and the towns from which the security state itself recruits from yeah yeah a very different phenomenon yeah and when that bursts as a social sort of movement onto the scene saying we demand our own share of this pie and screw you um it's going to be very difficult for the security state to respond to it because the recruits of the security state itself will be coming from the same place mm. and the same world view mm. um and that's i mean that's where i fear things may head yeah but then wo wali baat hai na ki the people in charge now like if we're looking at it even the, this is what you gave is like a a 12 13 year 13 year like trajectory but even within the next 5 years 10 years our governments only look at short term achievements will be personal achievement like nothing really for the benefit of the people will towards the end of the tenure bahut sare jaise now we're seeing islamabad mein expressways announce ho gaye ye ho gaya wo ho gaya nothing of this scale this sort this sort of price tag attached to it that would have been way more useful maybe even cheaper was done pichle 5 saalon mein it it just seems like i don't know like my cynical view is ke sabko pata hai ke kuch pata nahi term puri honi hai nahi puri uh we can't really we're not really interested in making meaningful change to jitna time hai paise kamao kal ko uprising ho gayi to we have homes abroad anyway so yeah. when the uprising happens this theoretical pakistani spring um who that at that point will be just too late right and the people who are in position now to make these changes they won't be here in pakistan even if they are alive because all of them are very old also <laughs> but even if they are alive they can just be like acha lo yaar hum you know we'll just fuck off to saudi arabia or yeah whatever. yeah i i i agree with you and see that's the risk right that's you you're you're on point with that in the sense that that's the choice they have to make is that do you want to flee like the elites of iran when the khomeinis came yeah Right? It's like a legacy question. To, what uh, you're saying? Do you want to accommodate, right? And I think there's another flip side to it, which has actually been the uh, biggest curse. Um, and when I do some presentations, I always put it is like Pakistan is a geopolitical rent extractor okay. for its history. Okay. In the fifties, me fifties, me, we forty-seven me independent. We Cold War went on. So we made American friends, friends, seat, and sent to be friends. Okay, yeah. 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 तो हमें पैसे मिलने अमदाद मिलने लगी है यूब खान के जमाने में बड़ी जबरदस्त ग्रोथ yeah. 65 की जंग होती है 71 होता है देयर इज अ मोमेंट ऑफ रेकनिंग कमिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ ओके व्हाट द हेल आर वी डूइंग हियर हम वो शुरू ही होने लगती है कन्वर्सेशन एज अ सोसाइटी तो अफगान जिहाद छड़ जाती है तो फिर हमें जो इमदाद मिलती है उस पे हम गुजारा कर लेते हैं टाइम निकल जाता है 90s आते हैं 90s में सैंक्शंस लग जाते हैं हालात खराब होने लगते हैं मुशरफ क्यों करता है मुशरफ अनपॉपुलर इंटरनेशनली प्रायः ईयू अमेरिका लिफ्ट नहीं कराने के चक्करों में तो एक मोमेंट आ रहा होता है कि आपने ठीक करने अपनी रास ठीक करनी है तो 9/11 हो जाता है उससे पैसे मिलने लग जाते हैं फिर अमेरिकनों से आपकी कुट्टी हो जाती है तो आपको फिर होता है कि अच्छा आप क्या होगा तो चीन जो है वो बी लॉन्च कर देता है तो आपको सी मिल जाता है राइट अब आप फिर एक इन्फ्लेक्शन पॉइंट पर आ चुके हो कि जो चीन से बड़े पैसे आने थे वो अब नहीं आ रहे आईएमएफ हल्का हाथ आपके ऊपर रखा रखा हुआ है कि अब आपको और नहीं देंगे सऊदी वगैरह भी कूल डाउन हो गए हैं थोड़ा सा तो देर इज अनदर मोमेंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन कमिंग राइट एंड एंड मैं जो करता हूँ लोगों से कि मतलब द बेस्ट सोल्यूशन इफ इफ यू नो यू लुक एट डिवाइन इंटरवेंशन फॉर सेवेंटी प्लस ईयर इन द पाकिस्तानी कॉन्टेक्स डिवाइन इंटरवेंशन वुड भी के यार मतलब या तो ईरान के ऊपर कोई चढ़ दौड़ है या कोई और जियोपॉलिटिकल डेवलपमेंट हो जाए जिसमें हम कहेंगे कि भाई हमें और पैसे हाँ कोई पैसे और आ जाए तो दैट माइट पुश दिस थिंग अनदर 15, 20, 30 इयर्स फॉरवर्ड बिकॉज वी मे गेट दी असिस्टेंस वी नीड एंड 
the world knows this as well see the world wants to interact and engage and and have pakistan at the table is not because pakistan is very important it may be important in certain aspects it's the only muslim nuclear power it has an army that is very capable of fighting a war um and it, it is important in that sense you look at geopolitically important in this location etc but the key reason why they want to engage and interact with you is that you have a ton of nuclear bombs mm mm-hmm. and their fear is jo hum scenario ki baat kar rahe the ki elites flee out kar jaye aur yahan koi radical movement aa jaye khomeini type that's their biggest fear right yeah. is that a radical power you know movement comes up and gets to power in islamabad and pindi and then the nuclear weapons are in the hands of somebody that yeah. perhaps scares the living daylights out of the west and like even seems, china in that sense it seems it seems like a fantastical unrealistic fear maybe now or maybe 5 years ago but in this 25 year plan 10 year 20 year plan if all this continues to happen nothing goes wrong hamare halat can't stand up to our own requirements then it just slowly slowly becomes more yeah. real you know iran and see the realized. thing is yeah and the thing is it may be a very fantastical sort of you know if you put it on a probability spectrum maybe 2% chance of that happening sure. right i myself would rate it at 5% chance of happening but when you are making a probability of 5% let's say 2% of a crazy outcome in a nuclear armed country the fallout of that is significant yeah, which means yeah, that yeah. you will be willing to put some money on the table to insure to buy insurance against that 2% outcome right yeah. which is what the world does with us yeah is like acha aapka collapse hone wala hai ye lo 2 arab de diya aapko acha aapko sasta tel chahiye aapko oil facility de di yeah right not and, because and they care about us but they care about what will happen they're guarding their interests yeah, yeah yeah they're guarding yeah. their interests that's what it is and what we fail to do is that we haven't been able to reform our economy to say look we don't want you to just give us a little bit of money to guard our interests we actually fundamentally want to meet this potential of our people mm. so let's look at that but there is again going back to the status quo there is no interest to do that because everybody yeah. gets rich everybody who's in power gets rich through the current system yeah. itself so yeah. why would they change to her ha we i i wonder then like you know one would wonder then okay what would you want how would you get this message through get buy in from the status quo wale log within the next 5 10 years to make this change like I don't know. Do you have to like just convince the army, ki bro? ये तो सुनेंगे नहीं. तुम लोग सुन लो. But then why would they listen? Look, कल मेरी एक एक दोस्त से बात हुई थी. We're just sitting down. He's uh, a lot older than I am, and has seen a lot of the old era things play out, um, including the Cold War. So I was talking about Ukraine and stuff, and then he obviously talked about Pakistan. He made a very interesting point. He was like, "Was that not in seventy plus years? We've tried all the experiments." we've tried martial law we've tried hybrid we've tried presidential mm. we've tried some level of democracy the only thing that we haven't consistently tried is constitutional rule okay where all the parties involved from the politicians to the establishment and its institutions govern the country as per the letter and spirit of the constitution itself Yeah, yeah and that is it. i fundamentally believe that is the only solution for the country and where it is yeah. okay so long as institutions will engage in each other with each other in this turf battle in terms of who has more influence and power for a small piece of the pie the pie will continue to shrink you will continue to lose relevance and your people will be continue to be poorer and worse yeah. off than the rest of the world yeah and how do we get to that level is a very difficult conversation a very difficult question it requires very difficult decision making at the very top because it is a top problem yeah um but it also requires people and citizens to inform themselves about what constitutionalism means what does it get us to how do institutions function how does corruption in the judiciary impact us for example it has to lead to very tough conversations and again that connects back to why do pakistanis is that you have to inform people yeah. right right that these are not these are not easy problems to solve and they've been compounded by decades and decades of misgovernance and and lack of respect for constitutionalism and in a diverse society like ours this is the only path we haven't tried we've tried everything else 
अब एक ही रास्ता बाकी है उसको भी ट्राई कर लो पंद्रह बीस साल आई एम फंडामेंटली ऑफ द व्यू दैट इफ यू गो डाउन दैट पाथ अ लॉट ऑफ आर प्रॉब्लम्स विल गेट सॉल्व बिकॉज इट इट इज फंडामेंटल राइट इट्स लाइक if if the prime minister is consistently worried about how he will be undermined or she will be undermined by others yeah yeah yeah, yeah. through non democratic means because she is taking or he is taking a policy decision that they've been elected for and they've been told to do and somebody doesn't like it so they undermine them yeah if they're constantly worried about that how will they make forward look that's why to me kehta hai ki every every plan is short term because you don't know if there is a long term for not the long term se matlab not even ke 20 saal like will you even get to finish this term like yeah. and and that's been the thing since when ayub khan came right because if it can happen once it can happen any time like yeah. you know so yeah and so when there is this agreement that we will run things by the constitution it gives comfort to everybody right ke theek hai we're not yeah. there yet it'll take us some time to get to that you know utopian self of constitutional rule but if we agree to start that journey together and and tolerate each other through that journey then it gives everybody a bit of confidence to say ke you know what like i can make certain decisions um that i think are right they may be terrible and if they're terrible i will go to the polls um and i don't think polls in 5 years there are no, local no. government elections right yeah i'll go to the polls in local government and i'll get smacked and then i'll have to change my status quo right and and i think that is the process by which you go it's very weird in pakistan ke matlab jo bhi hukumat aati hai wo kehti hai hum local ka bodies election layenge lekin wo nahi laate kyunki unko yahi dar hota hai ki unhone jo decisions ki hain uski wajah se wo power haar jayenge so they want to hold yeah. on tightly into power yeah. the that's, more tightly you hold on to power the weaker power gets and that's the thing though that that you were saying ke institutions will have to stay within their constitutionally mandated responsibilities for many institutions the big ones that means giving up future influence future cash flows for non material gains wo wali baat hai which is like a hard decision for even like a normal person to make ke principle ki basis pe aap kal ke paise kal ke dha ke plot aap chhod dein because it's the right thing to do for the wider public public jai baad mein yeah you know it's that that sort of thing but then coming to the potential bit hard segue towards this report could you call it this paper that you put out on um the tagline i remember is ke you know if if we invest now in cryptocurrency and you know making um okay, structures that facilitate crypto ka scene 100 billion dollars ban rahe hamare agle 15 saal mein so how, where did this idea come to you like, yeah. how did this so- start Yeah so look I mean the the full time hat that I wear um twofold is one I continue to do consulting work for companies who want to sort of align what we call align their business with public good need yeah, right yeah and so the example I'll give you for that is like we did a project in uh, Mexico mm. where the client was like yeah hey, we're a big retailer we're being left behind in the e-commerce fight and we need to fundamentally understand how is it that we pivot into e-commerce but pivot it in excuse me pivoted in a way where we can tell mexicans that we're actually a force for progress in the country and how do you, how do you bridge that right and so we my work is like okay let's understand your market where it's going what's your core customer etc etc and long story short of that project was that their core customer was the digital divide wala mexican jiske paas data access nahi hai ya sasta data nahi hai ya smartphone nahi hai So we were like your core customer, somebody who can't shop online right now, but they come to your store. They're the forty percent of the population of the country, and you can digitize them, and your story can be I'm digitizing them. But as you digitize them, where do they shop? They shop with you. So as they switch to online commerce, they will come to you first. Like the Facebook and that internet co- model, where Facebook exactly. is internet through Facebook. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it was like you launch a product, and so th- that's like how do you align, right? And then you can say our e-commerce pivot is also good for Mexico because we're sure. trying to yeah, digitize yeah, yeah. the country. Um, and so that's a lot of my work. So the idea for this uh, Web three paper came because I was doing similar work on crypto last year. I was like, this is very fascinating. And in Pakistan, the conversation was dominated by Wakar Zaka. <laughs> and this is speculation a gambling yeah, hai, which yeah, is in yeah. many parts india may be aise hi conversation chal rahi thi pichle yeah. mahino se 
so the idea was like i was like again it's like the same thing right like what you're seeing in the headlines probably not true so i talking to experts and they you know told me like hey this is like very different and i was like okay let's bring together a few people we brought together a handful of them um from pakistan outside pakistan to talk about what this web3 thing is uh what does it mean what what do you need to do how does it link to the internet economy where it is today and the output of that was a paper that explains that cryptocurrency is just the foundation of the web3 economy that this connects with the broader internet creative economy that pakistanis are earning from we have the talent pool as we talked about just now that the median age is under 25 they're tech savvy they have internet um they a lot of them are freelancers in the internet economy yeah, yeah, yeah. um so you know the idea was that core core push that we were making was that let's have a policy framework for the web3 economy that is biased towards innovation and entrepreneurship not a ban because ye jo zyada tar log web3 mein kaam karenge a lot of projects will go bust there will be all sorts of stories related to it, which is what happens with innovation regardless of the sector you're in but a lot of their earnings will be in crypto assets because yeah. you're participating in the blockchain economy right so you earn in that so you need on and off ramps into crypto to fiat pakistani rupee ke yeah, andar yeah so what we basically did was very simplistic back of the envelope con calculation that says look if over 20 years pakistan can have a concerted effort to develop web3 developer talent start with 100 keep doubling it every year you look at about 300 400000 uh web3 developers participating in the global economy they earn a specific amount of money 30000 at the beginning dollars in annual earnings yeah. it grows over time through inflation yeah. um so the collective part of that potential is over 20 years is 100 billion dollars yeah. just in earnings which yeah. is export earnings for pakistan which we need we haven't even touched on um investment new firms being set up crypto startups asset valuation gains from bitcoin and ethereum and others none of that is just is just like ke matlab logon ko develop karne do paise banane do aur us paise ko kisi tarah rupaye mein convert karne ki ijazat de do yeah right and the recommendations there were like look we already have the building blocks to do that we have nadra so you can yeah. implement know your customer uh, on crypto exchanges uh we have existing secp laws to protect investors um extend that to crypto we have existing laws against money laundering and traceability of assets that can be extended through regulated crypto exchanges um and oh by the way that solves a lot of the speculation and money laundering concerns pakistanis may have because the logic is very simple right agar main sabko ban kar deta hu theek hai to 100 mein se 100 banda money launderer hai to fia ne hum sabko investigate kar raha hai अगर मैं कहता हूं कि जो लोग फेयर तरीके से क्रिप्टो इकोनॉमी के को टच करना चाहते हैं आपके लिए नादरा से वेरिफिकेशन है आप बाइनेंस रजिस्टर्ड है या कॉइन बेस्ड रजिस्टर्ड एंटिटी आप उससे ट्रेड कर रहे हैं 80 टू 90 परसेंट लोग हमारे जैसे वो उधर चले जाएंगे तो फिर एफ yeah. के पास क्या कूल रहेगा दस का जो उसने मॉनिटर करना है वॉट्स अ बेटर यूज ऑफ रिसोर्सेज Yeah, going yeah. after all hundred or ten, right? So that's the type of recommendation we're making, and the goal is through the working paper, like let's have a more mature conversation about this versus just saying that ये तो मतलब वाहियात है और सट्टे बाजी है और इसको तो बैन ही होना चाहिए और इसकी कोई वैल्यू नहीं है. अगर हम ये करेंगे तो it'll be the same thing. हम दस साल बाद उठेंगे और कहेंगे कि यार ये क्या हम miss कर गए हमें तो पहले investment करनी जो हमने किया internet economy के साथ. India ने Infosys बनाया, Wipro बनाया, सब बनाया. we were behind we didn't invest we didn't build the talent we didn't build the rails and so we're suffering today because of that right and this is where everyone is on the same line starting yeah. point yeah 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 and we have the resources to do it so let's do it and and, and let's have be more creative about it and with the crypto thing i think it's there's a lot of yeah speculation and everything and the values go up and down and that's all true but i think much of it is also partially because it's not regulated as heavily by countries or economies as regular money is and once that regulation comes in which it will given how much money is flowing around and gay money laundering concerns whatever then you know then it will become a standard in many there is some country that officially ecuador i don't know some country i read el salvador el salvador yeah yeah they officially accepted what bitcoin or just the concept of crypto bitcoin yeah so it's not that 
15 year ago 2009 well a bitcoin where people are like what is this and the number of people participating is so small you can ignore it um and my exposure obviously has just been more in the nft space because i look more at creatives and creators but that's just also one aspect of it or usme itne paise hain um that people are you know just pooling into it that it's just become unignorable even if you don't agree with you know how things are run yeah and that will go away because then people who make laws make policies kali wo decoder ka jo podcast hai nilay wala he did a thing with somebody who deals in ip law professor of ip law and they were talking about you know yeah nft or crypto space mm-hmm. and how wisconsin has acceptance of i think uh, cryptocurrencies or daos uh, but other states don't but ab ek ho gaya where there were zero now there's one state and you know now it's just going to flow all over as, yeah. as as soon as you get a framework around it so what are the hurdles for this happening in pakistan because my thing in pakistan is nobody will do anything unless unko apna koi fayda dikhe yeah so look before uh, on that look nft wala point right i argued privately to so many people before the psl began yeah. yeah i was like the pcb should nft the heck out of psl right it would give earnings it would get the more eyeballs it would get attention it would increase significantly the valuation of the teams of psl itself which is the ultimate goal right it's a franchise yeah. model matlab unki value grow nahi karti to league grow nahi karegi right yeah but they can't do that because the regulations aren't in place the state yeah. bank has said we don't believe in this blah 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 so they're shying away from it right? which is a missed opportunity in my view the hurdles essentially are twofold one that the debate has been dominated by bakar zaka for lack of a better term um it, so it it becomes very like you know comical in that sense ke yeah. matlab kya matlab kya ho rahi hai dusra which is more significant than that is that the state bank like all re- central banks around the world including the indian reserve bank of india um are very conservative and they don't like this stuff because it undermines their sovereignty over money yeah. yeah. policy which is their institutional you know mandate um hoga yeah. kaise ye that's what we're trying we try to do with the paper was that let's not make a sophisticated model let's simply put out the export earning opportunity right because that's the way to get the hook into the policy maker to say look like matlab you need exports yeah you need well paying jobs for your youth that's yeah. what you've promised that's yeah. what you have been unable to deliver this stuff is things where you just need a policy you don't even need to develop an sec and bring in walmart to come and invest into you or amazon or paypal this is simply like a matlab ye guard rails hain aapki aur aap apna kaam kare and people will figure it out right it'll build on its own and so that's i think the way to incentivize them to think differently which i think they are um i've had some conversations with people um who say that makes a lot of sense and let's try to experiment now how quickly that moves is going to be a battle internally because the state bank is so gung ho against this yeah um, but what happened in india for example gives me um some level of optimism where there was a push last year tail end of last year to ban um crypto um rbi was very gung ho about it the policy makers then intervened and tried to understand what's going on and they fundamentally got it from an economic opportunity and transformation potential point of view and so they told everybody who was on the naysayer side of the argument to back off right. and let's figure out a way to guard against the legitimate risks and boost innovation in this way so india moved on it they're taxing crypto asset capital gains now at 30% and it's all part of this growing conversation there about how to regulate this i think we can do the same um but the question is how quickly do we move and again the problem will be if we don't move quickly or we go towards a ban we will miss out not only miss out on the opportunity but a lot of legitimate savings will be pushed into the crypto economy which will then be black and eventually hum kahenge ke inko amnesty de do because hame paise ki zarurat hai उटिस um and and yeah the the goal is to like talk more about 
emerging stuff. And so startups where we're going, like one thing I'm toying around with as an idea is like our startup ecosystem has blown up. Fantastic. 300 million. Um, there's still significant barriers into the next round of growth, yeah. um, which is the way I want to frame that question is what does it take to get to a unicorn? Mm. And what, you know, like, a, and sustain like a billion dollars in startup funding. Yeah. And how do we get there? And sustainability, and, and, there are questions in Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I want to do is like, you know, we, and again, we as a society are not really good at it is like long-term thinking, which is like, okay, 300 bhi aajenge, eventually billion aayega. I'm convinced of that fact. But if we start work to get rid of the barriers that may come up at the billion level that might be ultimate goal kya startup ka ipo pe jana hai na yeah. so there's a lot of hurdles in between series a b c and an ipo so i want to talk to people to understand what they think these hurdles are and then come up with recommendations to say look like we can start removing them today why wait right. until 2026 when right. we have to remove them if we do start right. removing them today people will more people will pay attention and the funding will just come in faster and it will be high quality. So let's do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to talk about that we haven't covered? No, I think we touched on a lot of things. This was great. So yeah, I don't know if you yeah. had other questions or not. Uh, not at this time, but I think I will as your, because I'm interested in now against my initial will. I was like, oh, what is this NFT bullshit? Like, you know, people are buying monkeys. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've eventually, I've, I've come around to, the thing where you know it doesn't matter whether i agreed with the initial participants uh, and their vibe because vibe is a big thing on the internet yeah. but like the thing is real and you know it's better to learn now rather than you know yeah. for up in a hubris may just ignore it and then be a late comer so i'll be interested in following up on that and the startup yeah. space is also something i'm interested in because i had you know i saw what's happening with kareem and uh, these transport sort of gig economy kind of companies and somebody in the startup space were like, bro, the masla hai Pakistan mein where startups come, they get the funding, but they never get to that self-sustaining sort of role. Um, and they're just dependent on the next round of funding and the next, just to survive. Um, so yeah, those are, I think, some interesting things that I'll try and follow yeah. up and with you as well. Yeah, yeah, no, happy to. And I think on the startup sustainability side, look, one thing that I've heard consistently, and this is not the ecosystem, the broader economy problem, right, is that Pakistan, I mean, this is UN research, which shows that Pakistan is probably the only economy in the South Asian region, barring Afghanistan, with a shrinking middle class. Um, and if you have a shrinking middle class and you already average revenue per user is like cents on the dollar compared yeah. to other markets. Yeah. If your ARPU is not growing, hmm. how will the startup grow? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ultimately, startup ka goal has network scale effects to a large middle class. So, if middle class is not growing, healthy. Nahi hai. Yeah. So, startup yeah. ultimately, any business in that economy will struggle because long ago, it's not going to be a it's not petrol to be a good thing. It's not going to be a good thing. It's not going to be that's what happened with uh, Kareem, right? It was great. Everyone was very happy. Then people started complaining it's getting too expensive. Then drivers started complaining that we're not getting, you know, paid well enough. Bonuses aren't coming. Things are rising. We're all going to in-driver. And now Kareem yeah. Kapo got in Milti in yeah. Karachi and now Islamabad as well. It's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how long in-driver, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how, how well, well they do. But okay, anywhere, uh, yeah, I'm going to link your report on crypto um your channel anything anything else that you want to reference no i out? think we're good we're good take it take it that's all thank you very much um no, thanks for on. having me again yeah yeah i think you'll be back <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're stuck now um yeah but yeah okay so that's it tv Pod. thank you very much links everything in uh below as usual and if you have any questions find us there and uh accuse him of being an agent <laughs> At least I'll get the conversation started. Well, there's up. Thank you very much for the office. Take care for the office.